Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 8 of KSP Road to Exploration, and I thought I'd start off saying I just found this little mission where I had to go to this place called Manley's Point. I didn't do it, but I thought that was fun that they put, like, Manley's Point in there. I'm not sure if that's some other names or the, uh, rather famous Manley around the KSP world. Um, but anyway, so, today we're gonna start with a very important mission. It's gonna go perfectly, except I forgot to put extend the antenna and then I lost connection and it smashed into the launch pad. Didn't destroy the launch pad, luckily, but anyway, we built a new one, we extended the antenna, we, um, you know, shot the engineer who was in charge of antennas before, and, um, we're gonna go! So yeah, this is a satellite bound for the moon, I do believe, um, although there's quite a lot of satellites in this episode, so I may even be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is bound for the moon, uh, because I've been paid to put a satellite in orbit of the moon. You've probably noticed I haven't had a ton of being paid to put satellites places um, missions. I don't really know what that, why that is. Uh, maybe because of my sporadic mission taking. Yeah, I flip out because I was going really flat. Kind of sucks. But yeah, I, I think I've taken missions in a weird order. So I haven't actually been told to put any um, satellites in orbit of Kerbin. Oh, well, I think I got one, but I couldn't really be bothered. And I have my own satellites. I got my own satellite needs. I don't need to do missions, I need to put remote tech satellites up and stuff. But anyway, yeah, this is banned for the moon to, um, well, complete a mission and also give me an extra little bit of communications around the moon. Um, there is some cool random communication-y stuff in this uh, episode, which shows the importance of just kind of scattering lots of communication satellites everywhere, which is quite cool. Um, some interesting things transpire, but yeah, this is all fairly standard, so of course it is sped up. Um, I've just got to get into that sort of orbit and then, you know, sit there, get paid. Uh, this is a new kind of satellite. Um, I think I'm almost be also being paid to get science data from around the moon, so I brought quite a big science package. Um, I also, uh, yeah, it's a new body. It's obviously based around the science package more than the fuel tank, like my old ones, and it's also covered in solar panels because, yeah, so I can just be pointing in one way and I don't have to ever adjust it to kind of point at the sun because there's always going to be some solar panels pointing at the sun so that's that's quite good. I'm uh, rather happy about this satellite. Uh, well, more probe. It's, uh, well, it, it's doing science, it's doing, it's doing everything. I don't think it's actually getting any new science but it's getting me money for it. I lose connection, weirdly there. Not sure what that's about. Um, it's kind of weird but I get it back pretty quickly. You see, this is one of the cool ones. I uh, get a downlink um, from, it looks like I'm getting, fr getting it from, it's hard to tell, oh yeah, there's one satellite, one of the Hawkeyes is getting the link from Kerbin, it's, uh, shooting it right back to the satellite around the moon, that satellite is shooting it back to Hawkeye 2, and Hawkeye 2 is beaming it all the way to me, I thought that was a really cool little, uh, little weird connection line, and then I get, uh, my link from Hawkeye 1, um, because of the way the other moon probe is set up, it's, um, it's not. It won't point at active vessels. Uh, it's pointing at Hawkeye too. So that's why that happened. Um, which it was just really awesome and weird. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I've just put this about a third of the way around, um, or maybe a quarter, just so it can act as kind of like a. So, so they'll stay far apart, so I can have two bits of communication-y satellites around. But yeah, that was fun. So I thought I'd leave that there, um, just because. It'll give me extra communication, and we saw that it worked just then. Anyway, I've just got a mission to plant a flag on the moon, so let's not plant our flag on the moon right now. We've got better things to do. Well, not better things to do, but we've got other things to do. I think we may need science or something like that. But anyway, we're going somewhere new. We're, we're leaving Kerbin. The hell with Kerbin. We're just going to go and orbit the sun. We, we Orbit Kerbin? I mean, that's like a little bitch body. We want to orbit the giant fusion reaction of hydrogen in the sky. Which will be below us when we're there, because we're gods among me. I, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Yeah, flip out again, because that's a staple of these rockets. I really should design a better rocket. Um, then I fight that with gimbal and just power on. I put the new dish on this. Now I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, uh, the dish I've put on here does have a long enough range to transmit a little bit of science back from around the sun, because um, we want sun data. We want to know about the sun, and that that's the uh, big fixed uh, satellite dish on there. I don't think that was on the probe I just launched, but I'm not sure. But yeah, this this weighs like half a ton, so I rarely put this uh, satellite dish on anything because it's kind of ridiculously heavy. But yeah, anyway, I guess it's just time to leave Kerbin for forever, except it's not leaving that much, so it might one day re-encounter 
which would be cool, really. I think that'd be kind of awesome. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to fire up that little uh, arrow spike. I, I really like that little arrow spike. It's in the stock extension mod, um, which is really cool. It's like fairly, it's very low thrust, very high efficiency, and you get it really early on, which makes missions like this quite nice. Anyway, yep, left Kerbin, that's good. I'm going to be a bit above Kerbin. It's not the uh, first mission to leave Kerbin, and we haven't even been paid for this. I just wanted the science. Um, however, I thought the uh, dish was uh, much longer range than it was, but it's actually only 90 megameters, and the other dishes that I've been using, the smaller ones, they're 50 megameters, so I'm now out of range. Um, this dish is basically made for Minmus missions, um, pretty much, or very deep in our system missions. So, yeah. Anyway, I didn't know that. I thought it was the, um, I thought maybe the communications on the ground were so terrible that uh, it couldn't get there, because the, uh, the ground station doesn't have infinite range. So I send out another one of these, just on a rover, to try and get a link from a different satellite. Uh, it turns out, yeah, it was the dish length, not, uh, the, the, these dishes are, don't have a long enough range. It wasn't that um, the uh, space center needed to be upgraded or anything. So, yeah. Anyway, moon, let's go. Um, this is the rocket I've used to go to the moon. Bit of a weird one. Um, those boosters kind of feed in and drop off very kerbally, I think. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of like, a, I guess, like a Falcon Heavy with three boosters, except tiny. Doing a moon mission that is something I want to do with, like, life support and, you know, uh, communications and stuff is just about possible with my current level of technology without going crazy. So, yeah, I had to build this kind of weird-looking rocket. Um, but yeah, it, it looks kind of like it's going to work, and the main problem is there isn't really enough thrust on this stage to have a big core stage, so that was kind of a problem. But anyway, Jebediah Kerbin is in Callisto 3, the moon that I was thinking of a different moon. I'm pretty sure I was thinking of Europa. Is there a Europa skimmer mission? Okay, sorry to cut in, but this is post-commentary me. I've just remembered what I was talking about, the whole Europa Skimmer. It's not the Europa Skimmer mission, it's the Europa Clipper mission. It's a mission that's actually going to happen. I was reading about this last night, I was like, Oh my god, this is what I've been trying to think of for eight episodes. Um, yeah, Europa Clipper is basically a NASA mission in which they're going to send a probe to skim the surface and basically scan the surface, and because Congress said, they're actually going to go send a lander, which is really cool. Yeah, sorry for randomly cutting in, but I had to say this because it's been bugging me for so long. But anyway, back to the video. Anyway, yeah, we, we, this is the Callisto program after one of um, Jupiter's moons that actually isn't my favorite moon. I think I just got it confused with a different moon, which I seem to do a lot with the Galilean moons. Um, oh, I bet now it's not going to be a Galilean moon, because just fuck me, basically. But yeah, anyway, so let's just go to the moon. Um, with this rocket. Uh, this stage is using an LVT-404 because I wanted more thrust, which was dumb, but I, you know, whatever. But anyway, it did pretty much exactly what it needed to do, and now we're on to the actual landing stage for burning towards the moon. Kind of not much like the, uh, the Apollo missions. They used the third stage of the Saturn V to push to the moon, and then I believe they used the command module's engine to slow down around the moon, and then obviously the lander was just a two-stage lander just to go to the moon and come back, and then the CSM, uh, the command module, obviously burned back to Kerbin. I think that's how it worked, but this is obviously Kerbal Space Program. We can get lots of Delta V in our small spacecraft. Uh, which is nice. Um, so just burn into orbit of the moon, find somewhere light to land, preferably in the Midlands. I like to land in the Midlands, because that's where I used to live. Not on the moon, in near Britain, but um, no, it's because the Midlands are quite big and broad, so I kind of like to land in the generic place first, and then go for, like, cool craters. Um, yeah, so this will be our first, actual first ever landing on the moon, except for that impact of probe. I was going to land a probe, because, I, you know, I like doing probes before I do... Um, uh, I like doing probes before I do manned missions, but today we're just going to land a guy, because it's, it's episode 8, guys. I mean, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this is all uh, now in, finally in one time, it's time accelerate for the first time in this video, and uh, hopefully we'll get a nice landing in. We do have enough Delta V. It might cut it a little fine, because I kind of expected the rocket to perform slightly better, but it didn't. Um, but yeah, hopefully it will... Um, land nicely. I have a small science package on here. I didn't actually bring a materials bay because that would make the rocket quite tall. Uh, well, the lander quite tall and re uh, slightly heavier. Um, but yeah, I still have uh, mystery goo and um, uh, uh, 
Thermometers. Why can I never remember that? Sometimes I call them temperature scanners. Sometimes I, I don't know. Anyway, we're now we're just falling gracefully with our engine slightly on, trying to slow down. I think I have enough delta V not to be too efficient, because you know I've done this a lot, and it's actually um, a lander design that's quite similar to ones I've used before, where I kind of tuck those um, <coughs> uh, tuck those uh, fuel tanks into another fuel tank. It's not clipping; it's just rotating to get a little better space. Um, I call it fuel density when I do something like this, so it sounds slightly smarter. But basically, what I'm doing is hiding a bit of the tank inside another tank, so I have better space or better fuel density. Anyway, we're coming down in this little crater, which looks kind of nice. Um, Jeb looks happy as hell. First Kerbal on the moon. Not the first Kerbal to orbit the moon. He's been pretty annoyed with Valentina. Um, yeah, uh, Valentina's uh, car wouldn't start this morning. She was supposed to land on the moon, but uh, apparently it just was on fire. Um, and yeah, there was a bunch of uh, petrol and lighters stolen from the uh, stolen from the engineering department. And Jebediah's card was the only one that was used last night. Oh my god! <laughs> No, of course he was selected for the mission. Anyway, I'm coming down and I'm like, wait, this is really steep. I don't want to land on this. I'm, I'm, I don't want to die. And Jeb's thinking, yeah, I, yeah, we're gonna fall into that canyon, and then I'm never gonna get to finally set fire to Valentine, Bob and Bill's cars. Uh, so yeah, we go back up the thing, um, back up the mountain, back up the hill, uh, to this flatter bit of land where we can land, you know, more gracefully because we have a thousand meters a second delta v. We need about six hundred to get off the moon ish and then about 300-ish to get home. So, as long as I, you know, am slightly, maybe a tiny bit efficient and land sort of well, it'll be fine. I have actually brought a MechJeb module along, which increases the price of this a little bit, and not much the mass, so it's fine, but I do like having MechJeb around. It just gives me some good information. You know, orbit info, delta V stats, all that kind of stuff. And anyway, yeah, now we're just gonna burn off our velocity and land gently on this slightly flatter bit of the moon. And, uh, you know, just uh, ponder the grayness. The moon is weirdly gray. I think it's sort of brownie, actually, when you look at the photos. Although that might just be kind of crappy cameras. I'm not really sure. Um, but, yeah, there was some ah, there was some pages somewhere of uh, some really great shots from the Chinese probe, which are, like, really cool because they're, like, really high resolution. And uh, Chinese rover, I think, yeah. And the moon looks pretty awesome. Anyway, we touched down gently. We nailed it. We a little inefficient, and we still have a ton of LTV, so everything's good. Um, I got a world first for landing on the surface of the moon. Woo! Yeah, landing on the moon. Um, I kind of landed on the moon with that probe, but just hit really hard. Anyway, now we are uh, continuing our uh, long experiments to find out what is in the mystery goo. We must unlock the mysteries of the mystery goo. Um, but. Yeah, not today. Apparently the moon will not tell us what is in the mystery goo. But so we'll just get a crew report and uh, some EVA reports. I think this is an EVA report while flying. Apparently we're on the highlands, which is cool. Um, I thought uh, I, 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 I thought we might be on um, the Midlands, that's what I was aiming for. But I guess we're on the highlands, which is fine, because it's always hard to find them. So yeah. Um, uh, damn, I don't put highlands landing on the flag, I've just realized. I usually put where I land on the flag so I don't go back there by accident. Anyway, get an EVA report on the surface. No um, crew, no, no, no surface sample, so I will have to come back here uh, at some point. Um, surface samples are good because, well, I don't have them yet because I haven't bought the new science center because it's really expensive. So I'm just going to call this probably like first contact because that's what, usually what I call moon landings. Um, well, the first moon landings. Uh, got spelt contact wrong? Yeah, now nah, 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 it's probably fine. And then the first landing on another celestial body, which is super awesome. Yeah, it is indeed our first landing. Well, I maintain that crash was a landing, but apparently the guys were like, no, we're not gonna, no. So I'm just gonna put down the name of the craft and the name of the crew, of course, which is just Callisto 3 and Jebediah Kerman. And not only if you hit enter, it just finishes off the end of the, um, fin it just closes the uh, window, so you have to kind of like press space load to do a next line. And yeah, so we'll always remember which craft and which Kerbal it was. Obviously it was Jeb. I always land Jeb first. Um, hopefully he'll be bound for Duna one day. Go and explore, explore the redness. Find out if it really is just a giant meatball. Find out if Minmus is really just a giant mint. Find out if Jewel is really just Mountain Dew. Find out if Elu is really just a snow cone. Find out if Moho is really just a potato. Find out if Drez is really just a really brown place I don't even really want to go. I mean, it looks kind of lame. It looks basically like our moon. Why would we go there? 
Anyway, yeah, so apparently all of the planets are uh, are food. That was all off the top of my head. Anyway, I got like 95 grand for planning a flag on the moon, so, you know, uh, that's good. With 660,000 somethings, we need like, um, I think it's, what, just funds or something? Uh, I think we need uh, like 950,000 for the new science center, so I will be getting that at some point. Anyway, now we shoot into the air, and we shoot into four times time accelerator. No, we don't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I thought that was a cut, but it wasn't. Anyway, yeah. Um, so just, I'm going to stay pretty low to, you know, conserve Delta V in numerous ways. Obviously, I won't have to waste so much uh, fuel um, gaining gravitational potential energy, and I won't have to, uh, and I'll have the Oberth effect helping me when I uh, burn home. Anyway, so yeah, let's, now we're into four times time, so I'll really just do a circle the moon and return to Kerbin. Passing uh, by our little satellites, uh, oof, actually building up a bit of a network on the moon now for when I do eventually maybe land a probe for whatever reason. Maybe I will, uh, just for, you know, shits and gigs. Um, I could treat it like a ground station. Or maybe if I'm landing, um, like, some packages for a base, you know, uh, that might require satellites. Anyway, I go a little deep into the atmosphere because I'm using an LVT-404, which is really powerful for this spacecraft, like, unreasonably powerful. Um, I'm just going to grab all this science. Uh, but yeah, I w usually like to use that little tiny Rockamax engine, but I don't have it yet. So uh, we went for the LV-2404, which is unbelievably powerful for this kind of um, spacecraft. Apparently I've got two of the same experiments, so we can't keep that, but whatever. Lame. Um, so yeah, let's just go back home and tell everyone of the greyness of the, uh, of the moon. And, you know laugh at Valentina, who still isn't here, because her car's still on fire. Um, <laughs> because Jebediah really wanted to go to the moon, and I respect a man who'll burn someone's property to go to the moon. I probably would. I mean, I'm not saying it's right to set fire to someone's car, but, I mean, if someone was like, you can go to the moon if you set fire to this guy's car, I would consider it. Anyway, I was just trying to tip this capsule to try and fly it, um, but it didn't really work. Yeah, not an arsonist, by the way, just really want to go to the moon. So, NASA, if you need anyone's car set on fire, I'm your guy, alright? Alright, okay. Anyway, so, yeah, I've got a bit of random satellite orbiting above me, which I thought was cool. I love seeing satellites in the sky. But anyway, let's recover this vessel. Um, just look at the, all the science we got, and we got more science for all the... for um, something. We did a mission. We're getting our Callisto debris back. Everything's just great. 700 G's in the bank. We can retire forever. Um, but we won't. We will continue our task, and our plans, and our things to go to the moon. No. To go to the space places. I don't really know. Um, to continue down the road of exploration. Nice. Very, very semantically beautiful. Um, anyway, so what do we want? What do we want to unlock? I think we want... Um, Apparently, I don't know what we want. We're about to end the footage. I, I think I'm going to get heavier rocketry so I can build some decent-sized rockets and then some smaller rockets so that we can just make efficient and bigger things. Anyway, um, I'm being paid to get a little bit of science from around the uh, from around Minmus. I already have a bunch of probes there, so I'm just going to send that back and get 20 grand for free. Um, so it's always good to leave your satellites places. Yeah, 27 grand for free because I didn't have to launch anything. That was just that. Anyway. Final bit of the mission. Uh, final bit of the mission? Final, uh... F final bit of... W what am I doing here? I don't... W w what mission is this? Oh! What? Okay, I've genuinely forgotten what this is, but uh, we're going somewhere with something. Uh, <laughs> and we're gonna, uh... Do... Something. What are we... What is this mission? I've totally forgotten. Anyway, so yeah, we're just going into orbit. Uh, I'll just keep going as if I haven't forgotten what this mission is. Uh, I'm just going to burn our way into orbit. Uh, you know all of this. Um, I've genuinely forgotten what the mission this is. Oh, Rocco 1. That means that I'm being paid to put a satellite somewhere by the Rockamax Corporation. Um, it's either going to Minmus, which I'm pretty sure it is. I, 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 did I go to the moon earlier? I'm pretty sure I went to the moon earlier, unless I was just commentating um, going to the moon while not actually going to the moon. I'm going to Minmus! Yeah, this is the satellite bound for Minmus. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was. I'm, I record these way in advance, I'm sorry. But, yeah. So, we've just got a, uh, being paid to put a satellite in uh, orbit of Minmus, in a polar orbit. Ah, I know this mission. Um, by the Rockamax Corporation. Um, which is uh, rather nice. Uh, it's... Uh, Pretty much sort of like the older satellites, 
um, that the old probes I used to use, but it's got more satellites and a better antenna and a few cool things on it. Um, apparently I... Oh yeah, I wasn't pointing my uh, my satellite, uh, my dish correctly, so um, yeah. So that was, you know, problematic. I couldn't actually get my encounter. I have so many problems going to Minmus right now with just running out of battery power and r losing communications. I should really put a third satellite up. Or just a better satellite network. And include more batteries on my probes. But luckily, uh, Minmus is actually in a much better position today than everything else, so I won't have a sunlight problem. So that is good, because um, sunlight problems have been problematic. But I did wait to do this a little bit, so that... Minmus was in an optimal position. Um, I did lose com communications just then, but it's all fine now. We're we're all good. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we're on a pretty good encounter as long as I do this uh, plane change, and that puts me in a pretty good place. I've got to go kind of, well, I guess not backwards around Minmus, but it looks like the opposite way that I would usually do. I'm not really sure. I can't tell when it's in a polar orbit. Anyway, let's uh, head on to. Minmus then, shall we? I lose communications temporarily, but then I get another one of these cool things where it's going from... Um, ah, lame? I changed it, but it was going from a ground station to a satellite to um, the moon to another satellite and back to me. And there you saw I was getting another uh, link from another uh, satellite, but basically I just point this at Kerbin and everything is held, dealt with by remote tech. Um, so I don't have to have any crazy, just like, links of satellites. Like, But I did like that a couple of times in the episode where it's, you know, bouncing off loads of different satellites to get a signal to me. It's quite cool. Anyway, yeah, so we're just going to um, get ourselves into orbit, I guess. Uh, and then, you know, do various plane changes. I've left this all up four times time accelerate, but I left in all of the, like, maneuvers. Ow, I just punched my desk. Um, so you can see kind of how you do this sort of thing. Although I imagine a lot of you know it. But, you know, I, there are still, I'm sure, beginners in the game who decided to watch some crazy guy do a series about something. Um, about road to exploration. We've got to go on this road to explore the solar system and the universe when I get bored and install that mod that adds the whole universe, which I won't do. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm just going to try and do one maneuver, which gets me into the perfect orbit, because I really like those kind of maneuvers. Um, they're really satisfying to do. But yeah, this takes me a while, uh, but I left it in because I, you know, tweaking. I know that's basically good enough for the mission, but I'm a perfectionist-ish. I'm a perfectionist for about 20 seconds, and then I don't care. Um, if you watch my City Skylines thing, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm like, oh, this has got to look like this. Oh, no, it's got to look like I don't care. That's my thought process. Um, anyway, so yeah, let's just push ourselves into orbit. And, uh, and uh, yeah, say that I hope you've enjoyed this. And there's several more grand towards our new space center. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.